I'm worried about making money. I'm not because I wake up every day happy. Yeah, I, I get a paycheck every month from the mm. government, retired. But I'm not worried about that, man. Yeah, I, it's passion every day. I, I, I do this. I do this for free, and I love it. And I'm continuing to tell the stories of uh, brewers, winemakers, and distillers. What's cracking, everybody? Mighty smart guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Burbank Cigar Lounge. Huge thanks for the hospitality of Brandon. <laughs> Rocking and rolling over here, just hooking us up here. Uh, listen, I'm excited with this gentleman right here, uh, Jeff Bradford, uh, good personal friends of my mentor, Patrick Bet David, yep. before he was Patrick Bet David. Yes. As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> Going back from the Army, oh, so. Yeah. Go way back. Go way back, huh? Yeah, yeah. Actually, so in this in this conversation, in this video, we're going to be talking about transition from the army, how he built up a social media following very quickly. Now he's finding a new passion here with beer, wine, and spirits. And if you like whiskey, you like cigars, this is definitely an episode you want to check out. So Jeff, thanks for coming on, bro. Uh, thank Come you, on, bro, brother. And I'm 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 honored to be here, fellow vet. Yes, yes. Who, who transitioned and is very very successful and. What you're doing for veterans too, my man. I'm again huge honor for me to sit here and be with you and talk. Hundred yeah. percent. You went from a combat engineer, mm -hmm. friendly fist fights with Patrick and David. Yep. <laughs> yeah. We had we had some heated exchange. Of I course. Mean, we're, we're strong personalities, <laughs> man. I tell you, we're very strong and very competitive. By the way, it's very right. very competitive. Back then, we were. Uh, I think I was looking back and saying. I hung out with Patrick and David every single day for two years, and then I was like, why? Why did I do that? Well, kind of similar in nature, you know? We were big dreamers. Uh, you know, we tried to achieve as much as we could achieve while we are in the Army. I mean, he was learning all about Humvee mechanic. He wanted to be the best. Bodybuilding, bodybuilding. was his passion. He got me started into yes. bodybuilding. And look, I'm still, you know, talked about health and why it was important. Yeah. I was always trying to beat him, but I never, man, that guy was a beast in, uh, in bodybuilding. Good. But he was a practitioner, mm -hmm. you know, and he taught me a lot about that, of being a better version of me each and every day. And that's why I gravitated towards him and became, you know, best friends. Um, yeah. And then it was, it was weird. We, he got out of the army and uh, we kept in contact for a while. And then I went over to the this, special yeah. operations side of the house. Yeah. And we lost think? contact, man. And then uh, you refer reserviced again, and, and, and here we are. Yeah, uh, which is good. And you you've retired since then, and yep. And uh, and now on to the next chapter of your yep. life. One hundred percent. That's man. awesome. I, before I jump into you, real quick, what's it like for you now to see Patrick the way he is crossing million subscribers on YouTube, CEO Deca Millionaire? What's it like for you to see him now compared to when you guys were were uh, uh, with each other every day for two and a half years? You know what? I, I'm not surprised. Whatever he was gonna do, mm -hmm. he was gonna be the best yeah. and the best version of that. So when I came back from special operations, uh, surfaced from yeah. my library job, you know, <laughs> being in the library, uh, you know, stocking books and, and all that good stuff in the special operations side of the house, came out and stock, I saw stocking books. Stocking books, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, shelving on, making sure they're alphabetical order. Uh huh. Make sure ketchup bottles full. Yeah, exactly. One hundred percent. You know that I was. I wasn't surprised. I knew he was going to be whatever he was going to do and take on. He was going to be the best version. Yeah. And like I said, I'm, I'm a huge, uh, huge supporter of him and what he does. Yeah. I, I can't. I was surprised at the value attainment, but I wasn't. And here's the reason why: is because PHP is the business side of things. Mm -hmm. And Pat, what I've known Pat when, when we were we were growing up, 18, 19 years old, he was a joker. <laughs> He's a big joker. You know him. Of course. I mean, he's yeah. pulling pranks. Yeah. Um, and I looked at value attainment as bringing out that side of him, you know, the entertainment expression. side, expression, yeah. yeah. He's also got the business side, we, yeah. we know and love, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and what he's built. But I think the value attainment side is, I see the kid out, you know, the, the, yeah. the bringing out in that side. So. The, the kid, the teacher, the leader. Exactly. You know, you know Bradford, you, you, you talk about yeah. you know, combat engineer, special operations, yeah. and you, you've retired relatively, uh, you know, uh, it has, it's not like you've been retired forever. But uh, you built up beer, wine, and spirits pretty quickly. Give me some of the numbers you were sharing early with with, with uh, Brandon here. Yeah. So in a little over seven months on Instagram, I went from my mom and my brother following me and Patrick. I got a lot of Patrick's huge supporter uh, to uh, uh, just under seventeen thousand followers. Nice. Facebook, we went from zero to sixty-six thousand followers. Amazing. And what I learned out of that is, first and foremost, is content. It's got to be quality content. 
Yeah. Uh, a lot of people post it's, pictures. It's fun watching your stuff. It's it, like it belongs on, tra on uh, Travel Network or National Geographic. Yeah. It's fun stuff. Your, your editor is doing a sick job. You're telling a great story. Yeah, you know, and that's the other thing I think that a lot of people don't see. It's just me and him. So a lot of times we get, we get, man, wow, what's your production team? Or I'm, I'm emailing a, a, a brewery and winery. They're like, how many people? You got five, six people. I'm like, no, it's just me and Yoel. Yoel Camaro, man. And uh, I, I will tell you, that I also did my due diligence finding a videographer. I mean, I spent three weeks looking at tape, spending probably two to three, you know, sometimes longer, you know, more hours what a day. For, what were you looking for? I was, I was looking for the same creative that I have. So I couldn't find any videos on Beer Wanted Spirits. I found it through travel. So I was looking at people that were traveling and doing videos. I was looking at transitions. I was looking at angles, shots, stuff that, again, I would look at and say, that's what I want if somebody's producing my episode. And I ran into Yoel, shot him an email. I said, hey, would you, how would you like to come to Iceland and uh, shoot about beer? And uh, <laughs> at first he's like, you know, at first he was like, beer, this is gonna be boring. Talk to him now and, and each brewery, each winery, each distillery has a story, a unique story to tell. So in your transition, how did you find your passion? How did, how did you find that this was going to be your thing for life after the uh, after the, the army. Yeah, no, that's a that's a great question, you know. And uh, luckily for me, I had 20 years to kind of dabble into a lot of different things. So that was the first thing. A lot, of beer, a lot of beer curls. A lot of, a lot of beer of curls, <laughs> right? You know. So the, the first thing I already knew what, what I wanted to describe was travel. What I did was I created a list of things that I love to do over 20 years, right? Yeah. The army is the army's gone. You know, uh, what do I want to be when I grow up? Uh, and I just wrote a list. I. I Wanted, I knew that I was good at writing when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to reintroduce that into my life and see. So, you know, started writing. That's how Beer, Wine, and Spirits initially started, was a, was a blog. You know, writing about what I learned about the brewer, the winemaker, the distillery. Guided tours first, by the way. Really? Uh, so the audio guided tours, I did one for Brussels. But I woke up and it was fun, but I didn't wake up being like... Passionate. Yeah, you know what I mean? I, it's that feeling, right? Mm -hmm. So I went down the list. I Tattoos, I love tattoos. So I started interviewing tattoo artists around Europe. Yeah. Again, you know, it was fun, but I didn't feel it. And then I came down to the next list. And again, I traveled around. Beer, wine, and spirits was always fascinating to me because I would always look at a label and say, who makes it and how it was made. So that's that was the passion behind it. Yeah. And then when I started doing it, I woke up hungry yeah. and wanting to do it the next day. And man, I tell you, it's here. I yeah. felt it, man. I felt it. By the way, make sure you guys stay posted to this video because later on throughout this episode, I'm gonna get educated today about whiskey and scotch. All I know pretty much from my Marine Corps experience was Jack and Coke. <laughs> but today I'm gonna have the understanding of what actual whiskey and scotch is all about. Yeah. So we're gonna be doing that through this episode. Yeah. Your recreation now into your new civilian life. Yeah. You know, what what so two questions. What do you most miss most from the army? And which do you hope to create in your life after the army? Yeah, no, from your, you know, from your military. Yeah, you know, the, the number one thing I miss is the camaraderie. Man. It's got to be number one. God, that's, yeah. that's the first and foremost. Yeah, brotherhood. Man. I miss, the, yeah. I miss the guys. I miss yeah. the, you know, the the joking around, the the competition yeah. aspect of it. You know, especially on the soft side, man. These guys, these guys are the best. You know, mm -hmm. and, and I really missed that. You know, around me. You know, the other thing was, I mean, structure, right? I yeah. mean, we, I knew what I was doing every day. We trained to do what the job, you know, right. um, that we needed to do. And when I transitioned out, I yeah. it was all, but that, both of those things were gone. Yeah. So here I am, I have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And yeah. I'm thinking to myself, I'm the one who dictates those 24 yeah. hours. I don't yeah. have anybody <laughs> telling me, do this. Oh, and by the way, I wanted to beer, build beer wine and spirits. Um, but I had the discipline. Obviously, we, we, we learned that when we were coming through. We learned a lot of different values uh, through, through the military. Yes. That was the thing, is I was very very disciplined, and I had the vision. Once I found the passion, beer, wine, and spirits, I knew where I wanted to be. Every day, I would write the affirmation of, you know, learn, grow, and, and get better in beer, wine, and spirits, and be the Anthony Bourdain, the Mike Rowe of beer, wine, and spirits. And oh. that's the vision. Hey, guys, if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow his channel, Beer, Wine, and Spirits on Value Tainment, Beer, Wine, and Spirits on... Instagram. Yeah. I, I think so, so many veterans yeah. uh, get out, and they, again, they, mm -hmm. it's it is. We have everything yeah. for us. You know, I had health care. I had if yeah. I had to go to the doctors, it was just like, oh, go to sick call, go take. Yeah. It was very easy. Yeah. Right? Now it's not that way. You get yeah. a guaranteed paycheck. Yeah. You get thirty days of leave. <laughs> Man, you know, and, and right. I think I think a lot of guys take that for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is. It's. 
life is so easy and then you get out and it's all gone yeah here's the thing when i transitioned i got out and just uh, you know you know it mm-hmm. I, I didn't it was it was all gone you know that, that it's weird this is weird yeah it was yeah. like you're on your own right yeah and like i was sitting there like damn i gotta pay him what's, what's this health care yeah and, and then i started looking at price. i'm like wow, people have to pay this, this? you know what i mean yeah I'm, a, I'm late 30s, man. Yeah, so and I'm like, single. I got to pay this much for healthcare. Right, like, right, what's up? Right, right. Talk, let's talk to us about how you built. Was there a specific strategy that you built your social media following? That's why you're getting a lot of traction today. So if, if somebody's watching this, what certain specific how to's would you give them if they want to launch their passion, their, their, their doing? First and foremost is uh, surround yourself with team that, that are experts. And if, here's the thing, I would not be sitting here today, Beer One and Spirits, with the, the, the following that I had, if I would have picked up a, a B-rated, or you know, a, a videographer that was not as talented as Yoel. Gotcha. 100% so of team is the yeah. number one thing. Surround yourself with A plus yeah. people. You know, secondly is the content. And the third thing is the niche that nobody else is doing, right? Yeah. So again, I'm not making any money off this. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, for now, yes. for now, yes, yeah. yes, and, yes and for now. Thing. And here's the thing. I told Pat, I had an honest mm-hmm. conversation with Pat. He was like, what are you gonna do after I told Beer, Wine and Spirits? He's like, how are you gonna make money off of this? <laughs> you know, honest question, yeah, right? Yeah. And I said, I told him this and I said, I'm not worried about making money. I'm not, because I wake up every day happy. Yeah, I, I get a paycheck every month from the mm-hmm. government, retired, yeah. but I'm not worried about that, man. Yeah. I, it's passion every day, I, I, I do this, I do this for free and I love it. And I'm continuing to tell the stories of, of brewers, winemakers, and distillers, I love it. And I, I don't worry about that. So the, the, those are the biggest things. Surround yourself with a team, mm-hmm. a great team, eight plus players, quality, quality content, and be different, right? Here's the thing I looked at, and this is another uh, Patrick mm-hmm. mentor. You're, yeah. you know, your yeah, mentor, mentor, my mentor. Sure. He told me when, when we're talking about beer, wine, and spirits, he gave me a few books to read. This is the one book that really changed my vision on beer wine and spirits and that was blue ocean strategy yeah okay so yeah, here's great the thing book. here's the thing that we we're talking about is i was blogging originally and i was writing about beer i was doing some, here's the thing that was a red that, hundreds of people thousands of people are doing that yeah around the world so blue ocean strategy said okay what is what is you know what is nobody doing right yeah. what is and I started looking at it, and two, uh, two uh, TV personalities I actually loved was Anthony Bourdain, travel, mm-hmm. right? Tell storytelling, perfect. I mean, he did that amazingly. And then Mike Rowe, right? Dirty yeah. jobs. He got his hands dirty. Yeah. I was like, boom. After reading Blue Ocean Strategy, I was like, the light clicked on and said, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. One, I'm going to learn. I'm, I'm a hands on, I'm visual, conceptual. Yeah. And then I'm going to try to storytell in a different way. Yeah. And that was a niche that nobody was doing, that Blue Ocean. And I think that's where. Team, quality content, and that niche that nobody's doing, but still that people are interested in. So. Yeah, because I'd rather go sailing in a blue ocean versus a red ocean, 100%. right? Because that's where all the waves and, and, and the sharks are. Yeah. Versus blue ocean, you know, smooth sailing and, and nobody's there. 100%, I'm excited about this part, man. Yeah. So, you know, you know, my time in the Marine Corps, Jack and Coke, you know, wild turkey, uh, you know, stuff like that. But you know, I think now that uh, I'm understanding what cigars are, we're gonna yeah. be doing doing an episode on cigars. Love it. Hook me up, man. What do I need to know? Educate me yeah. about whiskey. Yeah, you know. So here's the thing. I'm I'm, I'm still an amateur mm-hmm. at, at beer, wine, and spirits. But one of the most important things is, I think people miss mm-hmm. is finding their palate, really finding out what you like. Now you're looking at a shelf full of hundreds of different whiskeys. Mm-hmm. How? What do I start? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Start. Try one from that's smoky. Try one that's here. Mm-hmm. But the label will usually tell you, yeah. you know, uh, if, if we're talking specifically about whiskeys, mm-hmm. I think the first the first thing you really want to look at is the casks, right? All whiskeys yeah. are matured in casks. Yeah. So when I was in Scotland making whiskey, I was I, I didn't know anything about it. I was learning. Yeah. I was making it, and I went into the, the this bar had two thousand bottles, and I asked them the same question: How do I? What do I start? Yeah. So they said start. We tried three, I tried three, four whiskeys at mm-hmm. a time, ranging from sweet to real smoke, like yeah. opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. That's how I found my palate. But each one had a cast that they matured in. And she told me, the lady that was helping me out was like, pay attention to the cast. So when you taste it, you like it, look at what cast they were. Because then you can start gravitating towards when you see it, because each whiskey bottle will say, Sherry cast, Oloroso Sherry, cast, that's it. Yeah. French. 
It's McAllen's uh, sherry. Yeah, and they yeah. but they have all different style of again. Gotcha. Yes. And I, so with inside a brand, exactly one hundred percent. If you can pick a whiskey and you try, it, you're like, wow, okay, side by side tasting. Wow, this one's better. This is why. Look at the cask. And then you'll start to realize, well, you know what? I start to gravitate more. For me, I start to gravitate mm -hmm. more of Oloroso cash. And here's another interesting fact that a whiskey in Scotland might taste better than a whiskey at your house. Environment plays a role in your palate. So should I have my whiskey bottles on my win windowsill in my office? So Because that's where I have them. And you know, I, I would tell you, son. It's not a good, it's not a good idea. It, it's, okay. It's, Off the window, so. Yeah. <laughs> in a dark place, get it out of the sun, man. That heat sun is the worst that for your, your bottle of whiskey. Uh, what about uh, neat, no ice, yeah. versus with the rocks? And this is my personal uh -huh. personal opinion on that. It, it, it really goes down to what you like. Is it because of the more water? The, so, the more so water it opens it up. So opens what, it up. Yeah, it'll it'll open it up. A whiskey, you put mm -hmm. a couple drops of water. It'll definitely open up the, those aromas. Yeah. and the taste on your palate. It'll also if the strength. So mm -hmm. if you add ice to it, or you know, mm -hmm. it'll also uh, lower the the strength of the alcohol. Yeah. or the you know the the strong taste uh, characteristics of the whiskey. And again, you know, some people will say, oh, if you're a whiskey drinker, you know, you should never have this." I say this: if you like it. Yeah. Drink it. If you like ice in it, drink it. And, gotcha. and that's what it really comes down to. It's if you w do whatever you like, you know. Yeah. If you like sour beers or these, you know, like the, the men say, oh, you know, you shouldn't be drinking these these banana beers or these fruity beers. I say the hell with it, man. Yeah. If you like it, enjoy it. Well, listen, when I was coming up in the Marine Corps, the only thing I enjoyed about Jack and Coke was getting loaded. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, I mean, I'll be honest. Yeah. But I, but I, now I, that I'm a little bit more mature and starting to understand it, you know, there's different tastes and flavors. So yeah. what should what flavors should people be looking for when they're tasting yeah. whiskey and scotch? Yeah, so that's, a, that's the other interesting thing when we, we were talking about looking at barrels because barrels also give a clue into the types of flavors that are going to be in the whiskey. For mm -hmm. example... American oak, right? Yeah. You can already assume that if whiskey is aged in American oak, you're going to get uh, some vanilla characteristics, uh, some nutty characteristics. Mm -hmm. uh, we talk about Oloroso casks or French casks. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get some chocolate, coffee notes yeah. to the whiskey. Um, same thing with this, which we're going to be trying the uh, Glenlivet. Oh, this here is we go, baby. 15 year. Nice. And again, you look at the label, okay, age, you know, 15 year, again, age, some people buy it, some age, some people like non-age statements. Yeah. Again, that's, again, that's what you need to figure out and find out gotcha. by trying it. But again, we could talk about right here, first French line, oak barrel. French oak. Yeah. So, so that already gives me an indication of, okay, what hints yeah. of uh, flavor should be in there. And then I read down a little bit low, uh, lower, it says, Limousine oak. Mm -hmm. So that so for me knowing again knowing what I know and mm -hmm. beer wine and spirits, um, it's one of five regions and and then it says I say okay limousine oak that gives off a you know creaminess full body. Um, so again you start to learn a little bit more about the characteristics just by just by the writing. Got so it. that's what we should you know you get some caramel some citrusy notes off the the limousine oak here. You see what I mean? That's so, very cool, man. Yeah. So I feel all classy now. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I will tell you, but this will help you when you go into yeah. the aisle, right? Yeah, I right. mean, you'll go in there and you'll say, okay, French, American oak, and just try side by side, and then your palate. You gotcha. like, ah, I like American oak a little bit better. Now yeah. you start to see what I mean. You're starting to steer yourself towards what you like to drink, and that's it, my man. Cool. That's it. Uh, listen, uh, we want what's the sample? Let's, Let's do get it. this done. Let's do it. French oak reserve, and and here's the here's the cool thing. What I'm gonna learn today is actually pairing cigars yeah. with whiskey. You hear about pairing wines with food, yeah, yeah, yeah. with foods, uh -huh. but you know, big thing is is, is cigar with, with actual whiskey. 100%. So it'll be yeah. it'll be interesting to uh, That's it. learn about that. So you know, awesome. Uh, By the way, I'm looking for a veteran entrepreneur cigar maker. So if you guys know a veteran entrepreneur cigar maker, drop it in the comment section below because I'd like to make the connection between you and Bradford yeah. and uh, and uh, all right, I'm, I'm already distracted. So yeah, no, I got you. So you know, the, the, the first thing, um, obviously, uh, you know, pouring. You don't need to swirl 
okay. swirl it around like wine. Right, a right. spirit, you don't need to do that. Uh -huh. Right. So, well, just just usually we typically just lift it up, just smell it. It's delicious. Nice smell, right? It's delicious. Sweet. Uh, you don't smell the alcohol. The AB, the alcohol ABV on this is is forty percent. Nice. Uh, this is where some people could give characteristics. I'm not that. Again, I'm an amateur, <laughs> so I'm not gonna try to even do that. All I well, you're I, a pro to me, man. Yeah, I appreciate that. So and we'll give it a try. Cheers. Cheers. All right. So delicious. Yeah, and then so now you start to say okay. And this is where, if you had two or three or four different bottles from different, yeah. Now you can start to compare. Yeah. And now you can start to drive which, you know, which uh, which whiskey you actually like. Yeah. And help you out in deciding, uh, you know, in the future, because again, you go down that aisle, man. It seems overwhelming. So that's awesome. This right here will help you out. Got it. And obviously, the, does the aging matter? So the older the age, because I remember one time I went to Bermuda, yeah. and they brought me down to the basement of the spot at the the Great Cliff. One of the oldest restaurants in the entire Ireland. And they introduced me to a bottle of wine back from the 1700s. It was a quarter million dollar bottle. Yeah. So what So what does it mean when you age alcohol, when you age wine, or in this case, when you age whiskey? Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of it because, you know, science happens and chemically things are happening in the cask over yeah. a year to two years to three years. It could be good, it could be bad. The distillers, obviously understand what they're doing yeah but alcohol that's aged over mm. a little longer can take on a lot more of the characteristics of whatever barrel it's aged uh -huh. and how long it's been aging again it goes back to a lot of different things you know mm -hmm. um what type of barrel how long you age it in um uh different casts that you age it in um temperatures right um so a lot of that stuff's affected but again that's a two-year, three-year-old whiskey, a fifteen-year-old whiskey. Um, you know, it just, it just really, it really all depends. I, I don't know how a better way. This is this is so yeah, cool. I mean, there, yeah. There's like a whole nother world you just opened up to me. Yeah. Like I didn't realize that so much went into into whiskey and scotch, man. It's a science, man, yeah. and it really is, and that's why I'm truly passionate about it, and I want to find out more about it. Yep. And obviously, I want to teach people around the world. Yeah. Too, and we can journey, we can journey along with you. So we're going to pair right now cigar, which is one of my favorite things. By, by the way, every Thursday I do a Cigars with Matt episode. So we're going to pair today a cigar and whiskey. Let's. I, my question to you is when you smoke the cigar and the whiskey, let me know what type of flavors is different. Yeah, so that's, you know? that's the thing is, is uh, you know, trying it, you tried it obviously before and then, you know, take, you know, smoking the cigar and then trying it after. It really really should pair well or, mm -hmm. or not, you know, and that's the thing you're, you're really learning here, so. Sm I'm smoking a uh, Avo Classic, and uh, what you got over there, you got a... Uh, uh, this one's a Monte Cristo, mm, the okay. white series, yeah. All right, so listen, uh, as you wrap up the show, we'll do a Marine Corps toast. Never above you, never below you, not beside you. Beer, wine, and spirits, baby. Thank you. See? See, it, it enhances the flavor yeah. of the whiskey. It brings out, it, it kind of takes the bite away any type of alcohol. Like for me, that was just made it a lot sweeter. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. Well, that's a wrap for this episode of Get Some Veteran Entrepreneur Series. On behalf of my boy here, Jeff Bradford, on behalf of this cigar lounge, the Burbank Cigar Lounge, thank you, Brandon, for allowing us to film this episode in your lounge and on my channel the Veteran Entrepreneur Series, Get Some, and the Get uh, Money episodes, and the Cigars with Matt episodes. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching us on Facebook, make sure you click like to follow our business page. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you click notification, the bell, boom, to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Hello.